Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing great, as they always say. And in this video, we got some stories from Italy, Oklahoma, North Dakota, and Minnesota. So, as always, pull up a stump, and let's jump into it. Thank you for watching. This is something that happened to my grandmother when she was around 11 years old or so. She lived in this Italian town, a medium-sized town with a few thousand people. So she's running errands all day long for the family, and she knows everyone in the neighborhood and basically in that entire part of town. They were pretty close-knit. There's this really kind old lady who would always greet her on her way. So she was walking back from her aunt's house or something around 8 p.m. and it was dark out. She passes by the kind old lady's house, Apparently, the kind old lady had shortly died a few days prior. My grandma just looks at the house as she always did, and in the entrance, she's there. She's waving at my grandmother with that same warm smile. My grandmother is obviously spooked and just kind of leaves. She also said that sometimes her TV would randomly turn on and off when she walks by it, but that's something else entirely. So I got a few creepy stories from when I was living in Oklahoma, and I'll try my best to tell them. So this first one happened in around 2004. I was 16, so I was definitely old enough to remember things. My mom was always a super religious fanatic type when it came to being a Christian. And I don't mean the type that a lot of other people are. I'm talking Southwest Christianity that's just unbridled Protestantism all about inviting the Holy Ghost in and praying in tongues, etc. I always thought it was weird, even from when I was a kid. So, it's the winter of 2004, and my dad starts to be really violent. I find out later that he and mom were fighting because she was becoming an absolute control freak. He starts getting into fights with me and taking things out on me. So I end up locking myself in my room all day whenever I'm not at my part-time job. My mom is convinced that he's got some kind of demon making him violent. I come home from work one day and find out that he's in the hospital. He ends up having stage 4 cancer in the spine, completely inoperable. Mom goes into full-blown lunacy. She's convinced that prayer will save him and that the cancer is the demonic entity that's overloading inside of him. The next few weeks though, things got pretty wild. Dad is sick in an armchair and just wants to watch TV. My mom calls in people for prayer and even calls in a rabbi to try and deliver the demon out of my dad. I like to note that I don't exactly know what I believe regarding demons, but I will say that he made some strange and weird noises and movements during these. But to cut to the chase, none of it does what they think it will do. He ends up close to death. He's talking to people that aren't there and hallucinating and stuff like that. It's really hard to watch, but he also abused me, so I don't really care at the time. A couple of weeks later, he ends up dying in the ICU. I think nothing of it after all that, and I try to just, you know, carry on. Mom is just in shock and is constantly praying, which isn't actually praying, it's just her whispering random things to herself and pissing the rest of us off. So fast forward a few months later, and here's where things get a little sticky. I've been waking up at night recently to go out to get water. The kitchen is pitch black like normal, and everything is normal, but I have this uncanny feeling like I'm being watched. We've had hillbillies roam our property before, so I go out and I turn on the back porch light, and there's no one there. And I can still feel these eyes on me, it's really weird, and I'm starting to get spooked. So I get my water quickly and I head straight to bed. This starts to become a nightly occurrence. As time goes on, the feelings get worse. It starts to feel like I'm being followed around the house. It gets so bad that I start turning the lights on whenever I go get water. And it's always just me awake. No one else ever wakes up. But one night, something is different. 
The kitchen light is already on. I think nothing of it, but I get a snack because I'm hungry. I start feeling brave and thinking, like, have I really been scared of the dark this whole time? So I make a big mistake. I say out loud, if something's here, prove it. As if, right on cue, something falls over in the pitch black living room next to the kitchen. And I just, I freak out. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I run back to my room and I lock the door as if that'll do anything against a demon. It only gets worse from here though. As you can imagine, I am now on full red alert with this stuff. So I tell my mom about it. And she says, that's not possible. This is a house of Jesus. Please stop watching horror movies. I know for a fact that I wasn't dreaming. So I start stocking snacks and water in my room. Problem solved. But a couple of weeks later, my family goes to the store. We live in the middle of nowhere, meaning that a store run is about a three hour trip minimum. And I think, hey, no thanks. You guys go on while I watch Watchmen on TV. The movie's great and I'm having a blast watching it. An hour goes by. My brother starts laughing hysterically in his room. It's so contagious that I start laughing too, but eventually I start to get annoyed. And I say, dude, what are you? And then I realize, mid-sentence, that my whole family is still a Walmart. And then I sit there and think, well then, who's laughing in my brother's room? Every hair in my body stands on end. I get up to go look since it's broad daylight. The laughing is coming from the middle of his room. I take a step inside and it stops. You could hear a pin drop. I go back in my room and just try to finish watching my movie and I don't say anything to anyone when they get back. I just think, how the hell am I going to sleep tonight? So, fast forward to that night. I'm calmed down by now, and I'm just playing some Battlefield, so I'm trying to sleep, and I hear my brother walking in the hallway. I roll over to tell him to just go back to bed. The footsteps pass by my doorway, but there's no one there, and I think, oh, frick off. The footsteps start pattering around my room, quick as hell. I feel like my heart is going to explode, it's beating out of my chest. I say, screw this, and I just lock eyes with the ceiling, and that's when I see it. It looks like a burned out image, like when you look at a light and then look away. But it has cat eyes, and a mouthful of what looks like toothpick-like teeth. I realize just what the hell I'm looking at, and it seems to charge right at me. I freak out and jump out of the bed and slam the lights on. The game just changed permanently. It's at that point that I realize that I'm probably never going to be able to sleep at night again. I still can't mention this to anyone though. So I start playing video with my friends over Skype. This is how we spend our nights now. So the next few weeks pass and my mom starts complaining that I'm too loud at night. I think, okay, sure, I can be quiet. No matter what I do, she will not stop going on about the noise. She insists that she can even hear my keyboard from down the hall, and I'm thinking, yeah, okay. But I come home from work one night. I just worked 1.5 shifts that day. I'm so exhausted that I just collapse onto my bed in my work clothes. I get woken up by my phone buzzing. It's 2 a.m. It's my mom. I can hear you laughing. Be quiet or you're grounded. My computer is off. Nobody is laughing. The house is dead quiet. I don't know what to do. So I just continue doing the same thing until I eventually move out. So, fast forward four years in the future. I have been moved out for, you guessed it, four years. There's not a single paranormal experience that I've had in my life since then. I started to wonder if I was actually just crazy. So I fly back to my mom's house to visit. This time, I'm with my girlfriend. She wants to meet my family. It's a random afternoon, nothing out of the ordinary. She's catching a nap upstairs, and my family is out running errands. And then, the whispering starts. The entire house is whispering. Tens and tens of voices, all just whispering incoherently. I understand now that it wasn't just me. I'm also 
not a scaredy cat anymore. I have conviction, and I stand my grounds, and I literally say out loud, F off. It stops. I haven't been back since then, and I don't know what my mom invited into that house, but I don't think it was what she thinks it was. I got some spooky stories, rumors, and first-hand accounts, as well as my own personal experiences from my time living in Fargo, North Dakota, and Moorhead, Minnesota. Fargo and Moorhead are split by the Red River, one of the only rivers that flow north. Every year, a body or two is pulled from the river, people thinking they can swim in it, suiciders and usually just drunk college students who wandered a little too close and was swept away by that deadly unseen undercurrent. But there's been rumors of foul play, some locals even going so far to say that the smiley face gang is involved. I myself have seen one of the notorious smiley faces along the bank, but I don't know how much I buy into all that. Between Fargo and Moorhead is an old railway bridge that is no longer in use. The local homeless population have used it for decades as it provides a substantial amount of cover, both physically and visually. A couple homeless people have recounted to me similar stories from under that bridge. They both report that they woke up in the middle of the night, looked over near the water of the river and saw a lone woman standing there, watching them. One says she has red eyes, the other doesn't. They both decide to ignore her, and they end up chalking it up to it just being another junkie or just some weird person, as the FM area is just full of them. When they open their eyes again, mere seconds later to check back on her, she is much closer and a feeling of danger washes over the men. One of them tells how he woke up his friend, and they hightailed out of there as the friend saw her too. The other says that he tried to stay as long as he could, but she kept getting closer to him, and eventually, he ran away. There are some written accounts of this woman out there, on the internet, that are similar to these accounts told to me. All stories from the locals and from myself will be told from a first-person perspective. The first street that you reach as you enter Moorhead from Fargo on Main Avenue is one that goes south about 15 blocks. There is one park near the beginning and another near the very end. So I was going from Fargo into Moorhead to pop by my mom's house. It was late at night, between 12 and 2 a.m. ish. And I did this on multiple occasions. I'd be skateboarding or walking. I have to go down a long one way each time, and I always get a bad feeling going past the first park. Uh, I would often see an absolutely enormous black dog sitting on whatever side of the sidewalk I was going down that night. It always had bright yellow eyes, it was unmoving, and the breed looked like a Sheltie, but it was all black and just really big. I would always cross the street as to not pass by it. Its head and eyes would always follow me. One time I saw it stand up and start to walk towards me. I swear if it had stood up on its hind legs, it would have touched the shoulders of an eight foot tall man. I noped, hard. Another time I was going to my mom's house, taking the one way. I was skating hard, one headphone in and one out, and I crossed past that park, and I feel this gust of wind pass at my back. I hear the rustling of nails on concrete, and look behind me to see the black dog sprinting across the street. I swear I felt it graze my back. It tried to dash at me, but I was just a foot ahead. I never skated so hard in my entire life after that. The Ivers Building is an old crematorium turned apartment complex in the heart of downtown Fargo. One of the larger buildings on the skyscape it is covered in a mossy overgrowth that stretches from the earth to the top of that building. The inside is very dated, and looks like a hotel that had shrunken over the years with tight corridors and looming hallways. The elevator often fails and gets stuck, and when this occurs, the occupants will tell of the feeling of somebody else boarding the elevator, its weight even shifting as if someone new boarded. Those who take the stairs to avoid the faulty elevator often report that they can feel someone behind them, just out of sight, 
those who begin to run will hear the heavy fall of boots chasing behind them, stopping only when they get off at one of the floors. The basement of the Ivers, the crematorium turned laundry room, is a hotbed of activity. People report laundry machines turning on and off by themselves, laundry being moved around, whispers and cold spots as well as being touched or even pushed. So I was hanging out with my friend, who has a friend that lives there, and we were just chilling in his apartment. At the time, we were getting rowdy and drunk. I dare the big man of the group to go down to the basement and turn off all the lights for two minutes. He's wary, but obviously doesn't want to be a pussy. He goes down, and some friends follow to have cigarettes outside, and then go to the basement for shits and giggles. Ten minutes passed, and the big friend is still down there. They all go down there. The lights are still off. They flick the lights on, and... The big guy is huddled in a ball in the corner. There's tears streaming down his face. He's absolutely inconsolable. He stops hanging out with these friends entirely. He'll never say what happened to him. One friend says that he got it out of him. From his point of view, he turned off all the lights. And then somebody walked up to him and whispered in his ear and told him exactly how and when he was going to die. I don't know if I believe that, but I saw him when we found him, and I've never seen a man so scared in my life. And for the last one, there are three railroads that run through downtown Fargo. Near the river is a walking path that runs right next to one of these railways. You just walk up a five foot incline and you're on the tracks. Multiple people have died in what is essentially the same spot next to the railroad. One man was murdered there. Another was struck by the train while drunk, and a third died with seemingly no reason. The day before the third man died, I was taking a bike ride down this path in the early morning. I found the corpse of a large black dog, unrelated to the black dog in the prior story. It smelled pretty horrendous down the trail and absolutely scorched the nostrils when you got up on it. Its head was detached. It didn't look like it was ripped off or torn or sawed off. It was just not attached to the body. Very clean and precise. There was no blood on the ground. The flies filled the air and dotted the corpse of the dog. I looked for just a second after realizing what I was looking at and then I just dipped. The man's body was found the next day around the same time in the morning that I found the dog. Found by a jogger walking her own dog. What'd you think of those stories? Let me know which one was your favorite one down in the comments. And if you have any of your own stories, I have an email in the description that you can send them to. And if you like what you see on the channel, you can like and subscribe and donate to the channel if you want to. All that good stuff. And yeah, thanks for pulling up a stump and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.